Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is my name is Miklos, and uh, I, I'm from Hungary, and uh, I work for a company called Demarsis. Uh, we are doing software for marketers. I'm uh, writing Scala code there for almost two years now, and uh, you can find me on GitHub and Twitter, and I also have a blog which I update at random points in time. And uh, today I'm going to talk about scheduling and retrying effects, or more specifically a library that I've been working on lately uh, during my commute. And uh, in my experience, scheduling code to run inside the JVM is a, a common task. And uh, this could be, uh, I don't know, cleaning something up in a database or uh, polling some other service or checking if there's something to do. And uh, these effects may fail for various reasons, but if they fail uh, with some kind of transient error, then it might make sense to retry them. And uh, uh, this problem just uh, pops up over and over again. Uh, it's nothing new. And it, it has, uh <coughs> we've got this, uh, uh, of course, well before we, we have started our purely functional uh, our, our RFP journey uh, at, at the company. So uh, when you are working with ACA uh, or Futures, for example, uh, you can use uh, ACA's scheduler to repeat things. Uh, you can schedule uh, runnables or messages to be sent to an actor. actor and uh, you can specify an initial delay and uh, an interval, if you like, and uh, that's it, basically. And for retrying, there's a, a pattern uh, in ACA uh, which is similarly uh, rich in features, or or you can use Aka Streams. Uh, it m might make more sense for you, uh, to use Aka Streams for retrying, uh, because there you can introduce backup stages, uh, uh, which makes implementing exponential backup, for example, a bit less hard. Uh, but um, or or you can simply wrap a few functions around futures. Uh, Though when you have to implement a moderately complex uh, strategy for repeating or retrying things, uh, this tend to go south very quickly. And uh, these are also very hard to test. Uh, and they don't fit nicely in a pure program. Uh, and may require a, a, an actor, actor system or a, a, an execution context. So uh, we certainly can do better. Uh, a step forward is a library called Cats Retry. Uh, which uh, focuses on retrying things. Uh, it has a <coughs> it has a nice API, uh, and uh, it gives you the illusion that it works with futures too. Uh, and uh, so these uh, these were not suitable for our needs. So we we have decided to write a library uh, last uh, September uh, for for sch uh, scheduling uh, with, with scheduling in mind. And uh, we have to. We have had uh, two uh, requirements that it should work with tagless final, meaning that uh, it uh, should uh, abstract over the effect type, and uh, it must have some cool DSL. And the first idea was uh, that if we have a DSL, then we need to interpret it somehow, and this sounds a lot like free. And uh, I've included a screenshot from the. Uh, from an old readme of this uh, repository. Uh, these, uh, this, this was the feature set. It was not uh, quite rich. And uh, it was uh, in a very, uh, I don't know, it took a, a few hours maybe to implement the first version. And uh, it, it already started to show uh, some, uh, some uh, difficulties. Uh, the one of them was uh, it was only able to schedule uh, Fs of unit, which is not uh, very uh, useful. And uh, another thing that bugged me a lot uh, was that uh, we had after and we had uh, the repeat smart constructor, but uh, we weren't able to uh, express the repeat and after uh, with combining these uh, existing things. So it, it was really not composable. And uh, uh, being a freemanad, it uh, it uh, it supported composing uh, multiple things in a for comprehension. And the very next sentence, uh, 
In this readme was uh, these effects when run start all at once in parallel, despite being composed this way. So it, it was all, uh, also a huge smell, I think. So you, you uh, describe things to run in parallel in a for comprehension using a monad, which is for sequencing. So it, it was, was not okay. And then uh, uh, one of my colleagues uh, showed me the ZO schedule. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Uh, it is uh, the main idea there is that uh, uh, the effect and the schedule are two separate things, and uh, this, uh, you can uh, describe the schedule building uh, up from a, a basic element, and uh, and it, and it uh, I liked it immediately, and uh, started to think about how can I implement it uh, using. Uh, 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 type classes from cats to, to be able to break free from the, the zero I am on it. And uh, that's what I uh, want to show you today. Uh, so let's start with what a schedule, a schedule is. Uh, well, first of all, I want uh, it's, it's some data structure and I want to use a schedule to be able to write a function like this that takes an effect and uh, and the schedule and uh, runs this effect on, on, on that, that schedule. Uh, a very basic thing a schedule needs to do is to make a decision uh, that whether it should continue or not and with what delay. And uh, it would be nice if it could do it uh, in terms of uh, the output of the effect. So uh, here, here I just made the, the decide member of the schedule uh, to a function from A to, to decision. Uh, and now what, what should my run function return? It, should, uh, it could return an f of a, but it would be much nicer if we can compute some other type uh, as the result of the schedule. So uh, we introduce a new type parameter, uh, b, which, which will be the output of the schedule. And uh, we carry uh, this uh, value around in the decision as well. And now our run function will return an f of b. Uh, also, it would be nice if uh, we, we could stay inside the uh, context of f. So uh, this allows a much nicer implementation of the run function. Um, and also it allows us to uh, later to attach uh, uh, side effects to every decision made. For example, logging it or, or I don't know what. Um, yeah, and uh, how do we compute this uh, value of type b? Uh, it must be, uh, we, must, uh, we should have uh, some internal state uh, which we can uh, use for uh, computing this value of B. And now the decision is made uh, from the, the uh, A, which is the output type of the effect and the, and the internal state. And we carry the state uh, along with the, with the result in the decision. Uh, and from now on, uh, I will uh, rename this, this decide member to update because we are uh, basically updating the, the state of the schedule. Uh, okay, and how do I get my initial state for the very first decision when, when, I, uh, 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 when I have no previous state? Uh, we just introduce uh, uh, another member, uh, an f of state, uh, but uh, I would also like to uh, include an initial delay before uh, evaluating the effect for the first time. So uh, it will not be just an f of state, but, but uh, a case class that describes uh, the initial state and uh, the initial delay. Uh, and we, we should introduce variance as well. Uh, I've tried to avoid it because uh, I was scared of it, but uh, it proved to be uh, very useful. Um, uh, it it, le it let, us let me uh, simplify a lot of definitions and, uh, and it aided the compi compiler in type inference as well. And uh, what, uh, why are those uh, plus and minus signs uh, are where they are? Uh, a schedule can be seen of something that consumes values of type A and produces values of type B like a function, and that's why it is contravariant in, in type A and covariant in type B. And uh, also the effect type uh, must be covariant in its type par parameter because uh, otherwise it wouldn't compile. And uh, actually these case classes are defined 
in the companion object of the schedule, and uh, this is this is it. This is the code uh, that I, I copied this from the repo. Uh, nothing added, nothing removed, uh, except for a, for a space uh, because of a Scala FMT bug. But but that, that's that's the code in there, and all the uh, other stuff like uh, predefined schedules or combinators are uh, defined either on the companion object or uh, provided via extension methods, which I, I, I think is cool, uh, but only time will tell if, it, uh, it's, if it's really a good idea. Um, let's have a look at the fun functoriality of uh, schedule, uh, which, is, which was a, a, a major fun point uh, for me in implementing this, uh, this thing. So what type do I get if I pinpoint the effect type uh, in the schedule? The resulting type will be something with two type parameters. It's contravariant in the first one and covariant in the second. And then I can define the profunctor instance for this. And uh, it, it seemed uh, uh, very, very useful at first, but unfortunately uh, uh, I only found one use case for it uh, to date. But I hope uh, others will uh, will be uh, discovered. And uh, if I if I fix yet another type parameter, then I get uh, something that's that's uh, just a functor. And um, uh, this is this is heavily used inside the library. And on the same note, I can define a by functor for for the decision uh, type and uh, and the functor for the init uh, my init type. Uh, Let's see what, what predefined schedules do we have. The first one uh, will evaluate the effect, uh, we will never evaluate the effect. And uh, uh, I will, from now on, I, I will leave out the, uh, uh, the F type parameter for brevity, but uh, it, and, and, and please also note that this, this is not valid well Scala code. It's just meant to uh, signal that these functions are on the companion object. And, uh, and uh, uh, they just uh, give you an idea of what, what, what uh, are they doing. So you, you can infer from the type of schedule F any nothing that it, it fits any uh, effect. So it, it doesn't... Uh, need anything, anything special uh, as an input and will never provide a value because the output uh, type is nothing. Okay, the next one is unfold, uh, which is able to unfold a, a schedule from an initial value and the function that can uh, produce the next uh, uh, value and, and use that as the result of the schedule. This uh, will um, uh, this will not have any delays uh, and just go on forever and ever. And it is used to, uh, for example, to implement the forever uh, schedule, which uh, returns how many times it, it did occur. Uh, of course, it, it's uh, not infinite, uh, but uh, it will break when, when the integer overflows. But uh, it, it, uh, it is implemented in terms of unfold. Um, uh, another one is very much like forever. Uh, it just introduces a, a, an initial delay in the beginning. Uh, there is one that uh, occurs at specific times, so it will evaluate the effect uh, uh, exactly the times you, you told it to, and uh, will uh, have no delays as well. Uh, a spaced schedule uh, is a applying a delay between the evaluation of the uh, ev ev evaluations of the effect and it returns how many times uh, it, uh, it did occur. There is an identity schedule uh, uh, which have no delays and uh, returns the, uh, the type from the effect. Uh, there is uh, one schedule that can collect the outputs of the effect uh, as, as its return type and uh, and uh, two variants of of, uh, of this are uh, 
this next uh, type is while input, uh, it sh uh, which will continue on as long as a predicate holds uh, for the output of the effect type, and it returns how many times it uh, occurred. Uh, as a counterpart for it is until input, which uh, will work as you uh, might expect. Uh, and and three more uh, playing with with delays between evaluations is a. Uh, uh, this will uh, linearly increase the delays, uh, uh, multiplying this unit of, of delay uh, with the number of occurrences. So, um, yeah, it, it will linearly increase uh, the delays between the steps and return the, the current delay as its result. Uh, one that uh, uh, um, uses the increases delays according to the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, where you can tell what one means, and, and it keeps adding the last two uh, delays together to compute the, the next delay. And the last one is uh, uh, is for exponentially increasing delays, where uh, it will multiply this unit of delay with uh, with the base uh, raised to the power of the number of occurrences so far, and and it also returns the the current delay as its output. And uh, I'm not sure that I've uh, stressed that, but these are uh, uh, these are uh, ideas taken from zero schedule. So uh, there's nothing new here except the initial delay uh, thing, uh, and uh, uh, it's just uh, uh, it, it was it was not very hard to uh, come up with these because I, I had the reference implementation. Uh, now. Let's take a look at combinators, which are more interesting, I think. Uh, the first is after, which, I which can be used to add an initial delay to any schedule. It will not change its type, uh, nor its uh, semantics. It will just uh, uh, replace the original schedule's initial delay uh, with whatever uh, this function is provided. And uh, the the predefined schedule uh, that is also called after is is uh, implemented via this uh, combinator called on, uh, called on forever. Uh, the reconsider is a it's a very nice one. It it can change the the continue flag in the decision based on based on this function that it receives, and uh, the occurs uh, predefined schedule is implemented uh, this way. Uh, so reconsidering the decision of the forever schedule. Uh, there's a fold, uh, which uh, pretty much like any other fold you have uh, seen previously. Uh, it, it changes the output type of the effect uh, f uh, to this uh, to this type Z that that uh, that is used to 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 fold uh, the schedule. To yeah. There is uh, one called collect, uh, which collects the output of, of the schedule uh, in, a, in a list. And uh, it is implemented in terms of fold. And uh, schedule collect, which is a predefined schedule, is uh, implemented via collecting the identity schedule. And uh, now a few more interesting things. Uh, intersection of two schedules um, will the, the intersection of two schedules will only continue if both of the schedules want to continue and uh, use the maximum of the delays, of the two delays. And it uh, also tapples the, the results from the, uh, from the schedules being combined. And there's a counterpart to it, the uh, union, uh, which uh, will, will stop only if both want to stop. And uh, yeah, it will use the minimum of the delays. And uh, uh, yeah, and we have uh, left app and, and right app. Uh, they they work uh, pretty much the same like uh, the intersection. Uh, or they only keep uh, the, the the this this schedule only keeps the left hand uh, the result type from the left hand side. So it is implemented by uh, computing the intersection and mapping this this function that takes the the first uh, uh, first value from the tuple. And there's the, the uh, counterpart of that, uh, which 
it's basically the same. It just uh, uh, keeps the right and uh, the value, the, the type from the, the no, it keeps the value from the right hand side as a result. And now we have these combinators. I, I, I I'd like to uh, share a bit of uh, implementation detail with you. Uh, while input and until input, uh, which uh, both take a predicate, are implemented uh, this way uh, with, with, a, with another schedule, a helper, uh, which called continue on, which is a schedule from boolean to int. And it is uh, 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 implemented this way. So uh, we, we reconsider the, uh, the, uh, the decision of the identity schedule by uh, asserting that it should be the same boolean as uh, as we uh, we we have received as an argument, and combine it with forever and just keep the uh, output of forever uh, from this too, so it will uh, return how many times it did occur, and if we if we have that, we can contramap our predicate on this one, and uh, this is the only uh, use case that I found for it being a, a, a profunctor. Uh, we have uh, the means of sequencing two schedules. Uh, this will this will run through the first one, and uh, when it when it uh, says it, it it will stop, then the the next one kicks in, and uh, the return type uh, is uh, either of uh, 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 B or C or, or the left hand side or the right hand side. And there are uh, functions like composition too, uh, which is really um, um, kind of the same as in functions. Um, we can compose them. Uh, uh, we can compose schedules this way, and th this will will not run through the first one and then the the second one, but compute the result of the first one, then feed it to the second one, and then uh, makes its decision. Okay, uh, how how can these schedules can be used? Uh, they for repetition, uh, we have a we have an effect of uh, type of f of a, and uh, a schedule f a b. Then we can run this effect uh, uh, on the on the the specified schedule with this syntax. I think it's uh, pretty neat, and uh, for retrying it's uh, almost the same, but instead of a uh, uh, schedule of f a b. It needs uh, uh, the 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 input type of the schedule needs to be the error type, uh, which uh, which we have a monad error instance for. But uh, please note that it, it is sadly it's not implemented yet. I'm planning to work on it next week. It's a very fresh thing, by the way. Okay, let's see an example. This will be uh, almost the same as uh, occurred in, in John the uh, this talk on, on ZO schedules. So we will produce a schedule that starts with an exponential spacing from 10 milliseconds, and after it reaches 60 seconds, then it will switch over uh, to a fixed 60 seconds delay, uh, but it will do that only up to 100 times, emitting the list of collected outputs from the effect. It's, uh, it seems uh, complex enough to, to showcase the, uh, the power of these combinators. So the first one is easy, an exponential spacing from 10 milliseconds. Uh, and we need to switch from this over to a spaced schedule uh, with 60 seconds. The only problem with this line that the exponential schedule, schedule will uh, never terminate, so we will have to uh, tell it to, to stop when it reaches uh, uh, 60 seconds. We can do this with reconsider. So uh, uh, the first line, the schedule in the first line will, will, uh, will stop when it reaches uh, the 60 seconds delay. And after that, the, the space schedule will kick in. But that space schedule should only occur uh, up to 100 times. No problem. We can uh, make an intersection with schedule occurs. and uh, uh, it will it will stop after the the hundredth uh, repetition, and now we we only need to emit the list of we, we need to collect the outputs uh, from the effect, uh, which we can do by uh, putting all this in parentheses and uh, combined with schedule collect, 
keeping only the results from the uh, collecting schedule. And this is it. And uh, I've actually checked this and uh, uh, compiles and and, uh, and works too. Uh, so that was it. Thank you very much. I, I'd recommend you to watch uh, the uh, John Degos uh, presentation about zero schedules. Uh, a lot of uh, things are uh, applies to this library as well, and uh, the the source code is available publicly in GitHub, on GitHub, and it is also published in in uh, Mama Central. The README will tell you how to use it further. Thank you. Hi, thank you for the talk. Um, what, uh, do you have a plans for uh, integrate the theme with Zio or vice versa? Uh, in theory, it could be used with with Zio, but if you are a user of Zio, then I think you would be probably better off with using Zio schedules. So, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you for the talk. Um, uh, does this library uh, support uh, uh, some kind of uh, real-time logging, for example, uh, so that you can uh, yeah, trace? Yeah, uh, I, I forgot to include the, um, uh, it, it has a, another combinator called onDecision, and you, you can uh, provide it a function from the de uh, decision to f of unit, and there you can do any kind of side effect you want. Great, thanks. Thank you for your time.